Hey everyone, welcome to Port Neches in Texas for round one of the 2019 NGK F1 Powerboat Series. And everybody is safe and ready to go as we're just moments away from underway. Here we go. Oh look, there's the rookie. You should know that number eight. It used to be in Formula Lights, but now it's in Formula One. That's the young man out of Richmond, Texas, running for JH Performance Boats, V8 of Jeremiah Mayo. Him and the 85 Amicus going side by side down through the middle of the course. And they're gonna go down to the far end. Look at that side by side. We've got them going crazy. And it looks like we got a wreck down there in turn number four as they came across the middle of the infield. We went two, three wide down in turn number three, and we've got somebody who's gone over down in the corner. Oh no, that looks like the number 99 of Travis Yates, and that boat is in pieces. I don't know what happened for the young man out of Richmond, Texas, running for Snap-on Tools, but we got quite a bit of debris down there. As you can see, there's our driver getting out, making his way onto the rescue boat, think, you know, Please give a round of applause and, and prayers for the safety of our driver. Looks like he's going to be okay, but unfortunately, before he even made it to the first race of 2019, he's going to be watching it from the shores. That is going to be a long and arduous trip. Oh, no, looks like the two of Tracy Hawkins. The chaos hull is in pieces as he's trying to make his way back to the shore to keep the electronics dry. As we are just moments away from these 2.5 liter carbureted mercury v6 outboards underway and here we go as they come roaring off the beach what a great jump there by the pawpaw illinois native that's the lotto.com sponsored entry 62 of chris fairchild there's the rookie out of wisconsin of mike mackis side by side again with the number eight jh performance of Jeremiah Mayo, Mayo and Mackis going side by side. Knight cleanly through turns three and four, putting it on its tail is the JH number eight of Jeremiah Mayo. And it looks like we've got a clean start here in a second attempt in group A qualifying heat three with the 85 of Mackis looks uh, out in front. Looks like the burning the candle at both ends yesterday for the Mackis racing team. Helped them out quite a bit as they really have got that motor dialed in when yesterday it was very, very tough go of it. There's the number nine of Johnny Fleming. Fleming manufacturing on the side, making his way through the inside and down past the number eight of Jeremiah Mayo. And Mayo now finds two other drivers side by side with him coming out of turn number four. That's on the inside. The 53 of Greg Foster and the number 62 of Chris Fairchild as they squeeze the JH performance number eight of Mayo in between the both of them running down the front straight away. And now we come into turn number one. It's Foster on the inside. Fairchild on the outside. Foster setting his sights and trying to move up to second place and get by the number nine of Fleming. Then it's the four of Cheatham, the 52 of Rinker, the 15 of Kraft, the number 70 of Wade Gaspard, Jude Gaspard, and rounding out the field, the 77 of Mike Quindazzi. Here comes the 52 of Rinker, working his way up to try to get by the Trinity Excavators, your P3 season, final season standing in 2018, uh, boat number four of Wesley Cheatham. But it's all Mike Mackis right now as he's got about an eight boat length lead over the number nine of Fleming. And here comes the 53 of Foster. Down to the inside, side by side, down the back straightaway with the number nine of Johnny Fleming. Fleming and Foster, side by side, duking it out for P3 here in Group A qualifying heat number three. And then there's the 62 of Fairchild, the eight of Mayo. And it looks like the 53 of Foster was able to make its way through turns three and four and get by the nine of Fleming and move his way up to P2 here in Group A qualifying heat number three. The real question is, is will he have enough laps in this shortened format in qualifying to catch our leader, the number 85 of Mike Makis? Makis using that outside line, kind of moving inside to outside, scrubbing up that water. In Formula One tunnel boat racing, there is a wash that is created behind these four blade cleaver propellers that infuses a lot of air into the water. That reduces the amount of force that that propeller can create and makes it much more difficult for the man in P2, the 53 CB Technologies of Foster, to catch up or make up ground on our leader, the 85 Amacus. But he's doing a good job now as he's shortened that from about eight to four boat lengths. As they go down the back straightaway, the 85 Amacus peeking his rearview mirror, sees the 53 of Foster weaving inside to outside as Foster tries to find that, top, that perfect line to be able to catch and then overtake the 85 Amacus. 
Mackis now goes wide to the outside. Here comes Foster on the inside. The wild man from the left coast out of Orange, California. Runner for CB Technologies. Trying to move up one more spot and claim the top spot here in Group A qualifying as he goes through the wash of 85 of Mackis. Then it's the 9 of Fleming, the 62 of Fairchild, the 8 of Mayo, the 4 of Cheatham, the 52 of Rinker, and then rounding out the field is the 70, 70 of Jude Gaspard, the 77 of Quindazzi, and the rookie 52 Rinker Boat World of Chris Rinker. But here comes Mackis. Then it's followed by Foster as he slides it to the outside. Crabbing it out of turn number four, dancing it across the shores of the Neches River. Here at the opening round of the 2019 NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. Foster is kind of stalled out. He made it to that about four to five boat lengths behind our leader and has just kind of been sitting there as now we see the nine of Fleming trying to find some clean water going wide to the outside as one through three separated by less than two seconds here in group eight qualifying heat number three. As our leader, the 85 Amacus, works it down to the wide, far end of the course through turns three and four and makes his way back across the start pontoon. As we are just about halfway through, qualifying group A, heat number three. The 53 of Foster, tight to the pin, out of turn one, through turn two, trying to gain ground on the 85 Amacus as they go down the back straightaway. That big R on the back of the 85 Amacus indicates that he's a rookie in 2019 here on the NGK series. Not that Mike's a rookie to Formula One tunnel boat racing, just a rookie with our series. Was only ran in one race last year, had some severe damage to that all black pew designed Formula One tunnel boat in Springfield, Ohio. And so wasn't able to gain enough seat time in races uh, started last year to remove himself from rookie qualification here in 2019. The 53 of Foster started to open up a gap between that P3 boat, the number nine Fleming manufacturing of Johnny Fleming, and himself. So we've kind of got a, a, a kind of a two horse battle here as we get down to the waning laps of Q qualifying group A, heat number three. And it's a two horse race with the 85 Amacus doing a phenomenal job running for Groves Equipment Rental here, a great local sponsor uh, for many, many years here at the 18th annual Port Neches River Fest and the opening round of the NGK F1 series here in 2019. But here comes Foster. He knows that all he has to do is bide his time, find his line, and he's closed that gap. We're down to just half a boat length as they go down the back straightaway. And you saw there the 17 of Dean Wilson, one half of the Skel Chuck Skelton racing team pulling off to the inside of the court with looks like some engine trouble so we've lost another boat here in group a qualifying three here goes foster putting it on his tail dancing it wide to the outside trying to pack air under that 17 foot long formula one tunnel hall to overtake the man who's trying to go wire to wire here in qualifying heat number three in the group a foster went down to the inside mac has shut the door so foster had to slide it back wide to the outside and now as close as he was just a lap ago look at how one or two very minute diff changes going in and out of a corner allow the 85 Amacus to regain a three to four boat length lead over the P2 boat of the 53 of Foster. Looks like the 62 of Chris Fairchild and the nine of Fleming duking it out, but looks like those two have kind of settled in to battle out for P3 and P4 here in Group A qualifying heat number three, uh, as they've recognized that those two boats have kind of separated themselves from the rest of the field. Uh, and now you can see the nine of Fleming sliding it from inside to outside to dirty up or scrub up the water that the lotto.com 62 of Chris Fairchild has to drive through, which is gonna allow him to keep that six to seven boat length lead that he has right now as they go down into the far end of the course. There's our leader, Groves Equipment Rental on the side, a great sponsor from here in Port Neches, Texas. So if you're looking for some heavy duty equipment, don't forget to find the guys at Groves Equipment Rental. That 85 Amacus in that sleek, all black pew design hull built by Gary Pew out of Tennessee. You'll see numerous pew design hulls throughout Formula One, Formula Lights, as we are on our last lap. Two more, a couple more turns left for the man out of Wisconsin. Looking to make a dent here in 2019 as he comes dancing out of turn number four and across the start finish line. We are now on our final lap. I apologize there. We are now on the final lap of Group A qualifying heat three. Looks like the 85 Amakis might go wire to wire here starting on the pole in this reverse order starting grid in Q3 of Group A as he slides it down through turns one and two, down the back straightaway, getting by some of the slower back markers and making his way around the 77 of Mike Quindazzi, 
the 85 of Mike Mack has got to feel great after a very frustrating opening two qualifying rounds, which saw that 2.5 liter mercury carbureted motor give him many, many problems, but not this afternoon as walking across the start finish line and taking the checkered flag in Group A's final qualifying heat, the number 85 of Mike Mackis. In P2, V6 outboards on the back of these 17-foot hulls take off, and there they go! What a jump there by the 03. That's the one boat I forgot to mention. That's Dustin Terry, the dust man out of Thibodeau, Louisiana, running for Niccolo, the Ultra, getting a great jump off the start pontoon. Let's see if we can keep clear carnage down into turn three. Oh, the 40 of Cheatham gets washed down by the 94 of Rusty Wyatt, and here comes that blaze orange tipped. Crystal clear sponsored, more design ho run down the front straightaway as he's dragging side by side with a, his, the 03 of Dustin Terry on his right hip. Terry and Wyatt going down into turns one and two as we start lap one of 10 here in this shorter qualifying heat, the final, third and final for Group B, the second half of the Formula One field. Look at that crystal clear sponsored, more design hall. Just dance across the top of the Neches River here in downtown Port Neches, Texas at the opening round of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. He came off like a rocket yesterday, and it looks like they left that setup alone and didn't change a darn thing, and it did exactly what it did for him yesterday. He came off like a rocket again, and he's already got a seven-boat length lead over the man in second, the 03 of Dustin Terry, who had a phenomenal start off the start pontoon as well. Glistening in the sun, crystal clear on the side, 2.5 liter mercury on the back, and here's the 93. That's the CSR composite crap, brand new UIM compliant carbon fiber uh, Formula One tunnel hull getting by with one half of the buckle racing team, Jamie Duran. Jamie went too tight to the inside. That's going to cost her a little cash and a lot of pride as she's going to go a lap down after taking out the buoy in turn number three. Unfortunate for the North Augusta, South Carolina native and the Duke System sponsor. It's number 90 of Jamie Duran. And now working his way wide on her outside hip, trying to get up to that third spot, is the PPG Paints number 69 of Jimmy Merlou. But it's all about Rusty Wyatt and the man hailing from north of the border, the Canuck as we call him, rolling and strolling out in front with crystal clear wiper blades on the side, keeping everybody at bay here. He came off uh, from P5 off the starting pontoon, blasted off the dock faster than everybody else, made it down through the first two turns, and has had everybody in this Group B qualifying Heat 3 in his rear view since then. Notice on the side of that boat, a little bit different than some of the other boats. We mentioned that the boats that come, Formula One boats that come from Europe, have what we call crash boxes on the side. Uh, you'll see that also on the 93 CSR sponsored RJ uh, West boat, as he's building that for UIM compliance. They do that because they race in much rougher conditions with larger waves that tend to throw the boat sideways into one another. Those crash boxes are extra protection out, uh, uh, bolted onto the outside of that 3000 impact Newton F carbon fiber and Kevlar safety cell that these drivers are all strapped into with six-point safety harnesses. There's the 94 of Wyatt going tight to the inside, putting the 47 of Thomas Schlarb a lap down. Looks like some of the gremlins from that barrel roll yesterday still rearing their ugly head. And there's the McCullough Racing 03, Michelob Ultra sponsored. Dustin Terry in second position, now getting by the 47 of Schlarb as well. An up and down year for 2018. One out in Springfield, Ohio, but also had a lot of events where he just really struggled to put together a complete weekend. So Dustin really hoping to put together a complete weekend at the opening round so he can continue that throughout all of 2019. Talked to him yesterday, he has one goal and one goal only, and that is the 2019 Series Championship here in the NGK Formula One Powerboat Series. Brought to you by NGK, don't forget, they are the ignition specialist, the world leader in technology innovation, world-class quality design since 1936, delivering the finest quality in products and customer service. There's that Composite Craft Formula One 93 RJ West behind the wheel, he built it, he races it. What an advantage that has got to provide the young man out of Mantica, California. Uh, one of uh, two drivers here uh, coming from the west coast of California. The other one, Dean Wilson, not as successful this weekend. Still working out some of the bugs. But there's the 69 of Merlou getting by. The rookie of Austin Cheatham, uh, the second driver in the Nashville Marine Racing lineup for 2019. Mayor Lou gets by him. Do a look at there. Terry coming out of turn three, really putting it up on its tail as uh, Mayor Lou sits in third. But surprise, surprise, here comes our defending champion. He started last out of 13 boats. He's made his way all the way up to fourth. Rinker, 
Boat World on the side. Riverview, Florida is where he calls home. But in 2018, he made every stop on the NGK Series his home, and he's looking to do it again and go back to back for the first time in NGK Formula One Powerboat Championship Series history here in 2019. 13, almost one half of our Formula One field here in this final qualifying heat. This is Group B as we split it in half to allow drivers a little bit more wide open qualifying and get used to the rough and tumble waters of the Neches River here in downtown Port Neches, Texas. A big shout out to all the volunteers at the Port Neches River Fest in its 18th year here in downtown Port Neches. All the volunteers that make it possible, the sponsors of the Port Neches River Fest, you know, they're big sponsors, the Port Neches Federal Credit Union. Big shout out to those guys. They're riding on the side of the 47 of Thomas Schlarb here this weekend. And we couldn't do it without them. Uh, they're such a great host committee and a great group of folks. But there you see the 20 a rinker getting by another rookie. There's a lot of rookies here in 2019. That's the 91 S&J Asphalt of Jake Alkama. Alkama uh, coming from Michigan and making his way down with very limited testing due to the colder weather this time of year. Uh, but the young man out of White Lake, Michigan, uh, doing a great job here in his first race in Formula One. There's our leader, the 94 a Rusty Wyatt blaze orange lid and nose cones on that all carbon fiber more designed hull built in france shipped over here a couple of years ago uh, and uh, now behind the wheel is the next generation of that family's racing it used to be run by mark major he's turned over the uh the duties of racing to his nephew the 94 rusty wyatt it's a big family affair for all those canucks north of the border they made the long arduous trip down here and they're making it worth their while uh, and making that 30 hour trip uh, from toronto down to texas worth every waking moment the 93 of rj west really getting more and more in tune with that brand new boat lap after lap we saw yesterday early on in qualifying it wasn't set up the way he wanted spent a lot of time fine-tuning tweaking and it looks like he's done a pretty good job of getting that boat in a much better place here uh, full expectations for the uh Chuck Skelton Racing Team in 2019 are to utilize that new hole to really develop a package and a program that's not only going to allow them to compete for many years here on the NGK F1 Powerboat Series, but also potentially start utilizing that boat over in the F1 H2O Series and finding some drivers that could uh, utilize the unique design of the composite craft to be competitive over there as well. Eight laps remaining here in this qualifying heat. This is Group B the other half or the second half of the race uh, field here in Formula One. You see there's the 34, the man who sat on the pole here in this reverse order of points. Q3 starting grid of Jeff Reno. That's the Okeechobee, Florida native running for Clockner medals. Looks like he was getting put a lap down there by our leader, the 94, Wyatt, but uh, was able to sneak back around him uh, and allowed uh, holding Wyatt at bay. This is exactly what the 03 of Dustin Terry is hoping for. Terry, who sits in second place right now, is really pushing uh, to try to catch the 94 of Wyatt. And I just don't know with eight laps remaining if he's going to have enough time to make up the significant ground that the 94 of Wyatt has put between himself and the rest of the field. Well, I apologize. Uh, my uh, uh, miscommunication there. I thought we had eight laps remaining. We had two laps remaining. We are now on the white flag. Four left turns left for the man out in front going to wire to wire after he shot like a rocket off the start pontoon with crystal clear wiper blade sponsor on the side glistening in that white fiberglass more hole. 90, number 94, Rusty Wyatt. Goes out of turn three, slides it through turn four, back up on its rooster tail, packing it out of that 17 foot long tunnel hole. And crossing the start finish line. The winner of Group B qualifying heat number three, his second win in three heats of qualifying, which, uh, if my math serves me correctly, unofficially will be our pole sitter for our main event later on this afternoon at 315. Boy, what a phenomenal way it is to get back in to Formula One Tunnel Boat Racing in 2019. He took a hiatus in 2018 as they really, the, the entire team focused on getting that crystal clear wiper blades package dialed in. They weren't ready last year. They decided to take a year off, make sure this boat was absolutely perfect. And I think all that hard work is coming to fruition so far here at the opening round of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships as he has got that thing dialed in and dancing here at uh, downtown Port Neches, Texas at the 18th annual Port Neches River Fest.
As we take a look at our starting grid for today's NGK Formula One Powerboat Championship, this is round one of 2019. Ashton Rinker, Greg Foster right at the front. We got rookie uh, in fourth place of uh, RJ West. And as we said, 13 rookies in the event, including Jamie Duran. We saw her have a great run, a top 10 in her heat race earlier. Starting 12th, got a great starting position for Jamie. Some of the bigger names in the sport, including Chris Rinker and Austin Cheatham, deeper uh, on the grid here. Couple new rookies, though, and it's going to be interesting. Together, here we go. Coming off the talk with a great jump there by the four Cheatham and the 62 of Fairchild. Not very good was the 69 at Jimmy Merlu. You see some of the slower back markers moving way down to the inside. And there comes 24 Formula Ones rolling off the beach. And look at the 62 of Fairchild. He's got it side by side. Going right to the outside now, cutting off the 20 of Rinker. We got a battle from lap one. Here is the man out of Paw Paw, Illinois, running for Lottery.com in a boat built by the late, great, God rest his soul, Lynn Simberger. The 62 of Fairchild looking to do it justice here at the opening round of the NGK series here in Port Neches. He blasted off the dock. He's got it dialed in and screaming with that 2.5 liter pumping out 8,000 RPMs here on the Neches River. Then it's the 20 of Rinker. And look at there, the 94 of Rusty, Rusty Wyatt. After starting fourth off the start, excuse me, a fifth off the start pontoon, he's worked his way up to third. Then right behind him, we've got the 93 of RJ West. Sliding in behind them, trying to fight for a spot on the podium, but sitting out in, in front. P1, Lottery.com on the side. The cagey and wily veteran. He is a surgeon on the water. He is probably one of the most well-respected tunnel boat racers all in the world. Two-time, 24-hour of Rouen endurance champion, giving him his boat, allowing him to run here in the Formula One final after his boat was destroyed earlier on today. Oh no, it looks like our lone female competitor here in the opening round of the NGKF1 series has gotten some damage. The Duke Systems Incorporated sponsored number 90 of Jamie Durand is limping put together this weekend. It was looking very strong. I mean, out of a field of 20, 30 boats that started, 25 here for the final. Jamie started 12th, so pretty good there in the middle, but looks like she's gotten some damage on that boat. There goes the dust man putting it up on its tail. Dancing wide on the inside. Here comes Makus on the outside. Poor Groves Equipment Rental here, local sponsor, taking care of the Makus Racing Team, capitalizing on that mistake by the 03 Dustman of Dustin Terry as he put it way up on its tail, almost blew it over, coming into turn number three, and he's moved himself up another spot on the grid here at the opening round of the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. NGK F1 Powerboat Championships brought to you by the great folks at NGK Sparks Plugs and Oxygen Sensors. They are the ignition, ignition specialist, so reliable, with performance on the water, they're the only brand trusted by OEMs, and they ask for it by name. Everybody else is asking right now, their radio men and crew chiefs, what the heck do we do with this 62 of Chris Fairchild? It's now the real cat and mouse game begins. The 62 of Fairchild looking to get by the number 15 of Tim Kraft and put him up as a back marker, a lap down. Now it's going to require the 20 of Rinker, the 94 of Wyatt, the 69 of Marilou, the 93 of West. Those highly competitive drivers that are trying to track down our leader are going to have to navigate and get around some of those back markers. No surprise from the man talking to you right now, giving you all this live racing action that the 62 of Chris Fairchild is out in front. He is somebody who can take a subpar piece of equipment and run it like it's a premier piece of equipment due to the sheer will, determination, and skill that he has in the cockpit of his Formula One boat. There's the 20 of Rinker. Rinker Boat World on the side. Your defending champion here in the NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships trying to do everything he can to close the gap. Oh, watch out there. He got real close. Now he goes to the inside. He's looking to make... 62 of Fairchild sliding wide to the outside, trying to keep those RPMs up and try to outdrag of extra 20 of Rinker, as we see the overview shot here. They are 
nose to tail as they go down through turns three and four and back down the front straightaway. Here comes Rinker, down the back stretch on the inside. Oh, look out there, Ashton Rinker, almost blowing it over as they got into turn number three. He knows if he gets too close and too tight with Fairchild, when Fairchild sets that boat or trims it into the corner, he's going to expunge all the air from underneath his tunnel. That's going to lift the 20 of Rinker, so he had to back off so he didn't blow it over. Out of coming into turn number three there, hot. Woo, what a race we got going on, 25 Formula One boats here on the waters of the Neches River. The 18th annual Port Neches River Fest. Big shout out to the guys over at the wheelhouse, all the volunteers and all the great folks in Port Neches and the main Port Neches River Fest sponsor, Port Neches Federal Credit Union. We couldn't do it without you guys or without all the rest of our great sponsors. The folks from Ameristar Roofing, Certainty, shaping the building products industry for more than 110 years. Welded pumps, CDI Electronics. These great sponsors are bringing you all this live, amazing racing action here from the shores of the Neches River. The 62 of Fairchild, more back markers as he gets by the 77 of Mike Quindazzi. And boy, how frustrating does the two of Tracy Hawkins have to be. The boat he has is not set up for him. It's not running very well, and he was dialed in before that collision in qualifying with the 99 8s and the 27 of profit but at the end of the day i said earlier in the in the broadcast that you need to collect points at every race tracy recognizes that he's definitely put himself behind the eight ball but he knows he needs at least some points for today here's the 20 of rinker sitting in p2 trying to do everything he can work every line on the water every trick in the book to try to get by the 62 of fairchild He's got a wealth of knowledge, multi-time world and national champion. Here comes the 93 of RJ West. Something might have happened with the 20 of Rinker. He might be losing top speed. Or did the man who built his own boat have it so dialed in here by Sunday afternoon that the CSR, Chuck Skelton Racing, Composite Craft Formula One of RJ West has just got it screaming that hard. He's now in second place. Getting by the 34 Clockner medals of Jeff Reel, the Okeechobee, Florida native blew up his first, his number one and his number two power head. He's on number three for the weekend. Been a rough go of it for the gentleman out of Okeechobee, Florida, but trying to put together a solid finish here in the finals. Oh, look at him, we got him three wide down on turns one and two. We had West on the inside, the 34 Arenos sandwiched in the middle, and the 20 of Rinker, and it looks like Rinker might have lost out on that three-way sandwich coming out of turn number three, but it is all, all correct right there, Chuck. A name that is synonymous with tunnel boat racing over the past two decades. You talk to any driver in the field, they're going to tell you, I'm, I'm worried about Fairchild. That's the guy that I am watching out for. You see there uh, the other half of the bucket lid racing team, Dean Duran, going wide to the outside, had engine problems all weekend long. And now it sounds like they've got some physical damage to the other half of that racing team with her, his daughter, the 90 of Jamie Duran, going out on lap number three. Here's a guy very surprising, rookie struggled yesterday the 85 of mike mackis has really turned some heads here this afternoon talking earlier to greg foster uh, who sits back in fifth position he was absolutely stunned at how well mike drove in the final qualifying he he just couldn't get around him he didn't have an answer for him here's the 20 of rinker trying to get by the rookie the 40 of austin cheatham running as one half of the nashville marine racing team but there he is again out of three and four packing air out of that 17 foot long tunnel hall with his 2.5 liter mercury Outboard on the back, 8,000 plus RPMs, up to five Gs in the corner. Strapped in and in an all carbon fiber Kevlar safety cell, six point safety harness. That makes him feel safe so he can push it to the limit, to the edge. And it looks like, oh no, we've got the number 57, David McMurray. The troubles continue for the lead man of the Nashville Marine Racing Team. His primary boat was damaged on Friday in testing. His backup bout now looks like he's calling it a day. I don't know if it's not set up right, and he's worried he's going to destroy yet another boat, and he wants to be able to finish the season. He will get some points for starting the race. He recognizes he knows that he needs to collect points every race, so it sounds like he might be bowing out or a technical issue. But right now, oh, look at the 24. That's a brand-new Hoffman design hall that run it, the man uh, running for Clover Construction. That's the 24 of Spencer Love. It's taken a this weekend, just like our winner in Formula Lights, Mark Spierbach, brand new boat, had to take some time to get it set up, but it looks like he's really got it dialed in here this afternoon, running much, much better here in this main event of the Formula One class. But look at that, lottery.com. Check out lottery.com and buy your Powerball and all your lottery tickets from wherever you are across the country. With the great folks over at lottery.com bringing you Chris Fairchild here this weekend. And it's a good thing they did because he is putting on a clinic. 
out here on this 1.25 mile four turn track here on the Neches River. So looks like we got a battle for six now. It's the rookie, the eight of Jeremiah Mayo, runner for change, performance boats, and the 24 of Spencer Love. Spencer Love looks like he's been able to get by him, probably using a little bit more of that experience from being an F1 driver for the past few seasons to get by the eight of Mayo. And once, as a rookie, it's very tough to get back around some of these experienced drivers once they've been by. There's 24 of Love going out of the corner, then eight right behind him. Three, two and a half to three seconds split between the fifth and sixth place boats. But the lead is growing mightily for our leader, the 62 of Chris Fairchild. As you see, there goes the 20 of Rinker and the 93 of West. A good 10 seconds behind our leader. He is asserting his dominance on the field. He is doing Lynn Sermiger proud, as he told me that the second I talked to him when I got here this weekend, he told me, I am here to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to show the world that Lynn Simberger was a darn great boat builder, a phenomenal person, and in his honor, I'm gonna run this thing to the checkered flag. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. He's just gotta hold off the rest of the field for about 25 more laps here on this 1.25 mile course on the Neches River. The 93 of West doing a great job of holding the 20 of Rinker at bay. But when you have 25 Formula Ones on the water, there's so many back markers, there's so many different boats that it's really hard to be able to navigate the back markers and maintain that gap or close the gap on the boat in front of you. Right now, here's your top five. The 62 of Fairchild, clearly way out in front. 93 of RJ West to the 20 of Ashton Rinker duking it out side by side for second and third. Just outside the podium looking in is the crystal clear wiper blades 94 of Wyatt. Then it's the number 24 of Spencer Love, followed by another rookie, the number eight of Jeremiah Mayo. Just about a third way through this Formula One final. Looks like the I-93 of RJ West might have got a little bit of rub in there as he's got some something flapping off the inside and that's caused him to slow down. Here goes the 20 of Rinker. I don't know what happened to the 93 of RJ West. But there was some vinyl or something causing extra drag. He went wide. Rinker said, thank you very much. Slammed the door shut and came out of turns one and two back up in second position. But he has an extremely difficult task in front of him. And that is to try to close a 10 plus second gap between him and our leader, the number 62 of Chris Fairchild. These Formula One tunnel halls are the ultimate in racing machines. Imagine an airplane, a Formula One car, all on a surface that changes and is dynamic every second you're on the water. You know, it's funny, I was talking to a good friend of mine uh, who lives in Houston, and I was sharing with him a story from back in the uh, 1980s. Yeah, I know it was a while ago, but it still rings true. They put a Formula One driver from the Formula One car series that travels the world in a two-seater Formula One boat. He got on and he said, no, thank you. Brakes are what I need to be able to survive, and I'm, you guys don't have brakes. That's right, there's no brakes, only gas here for these Formula One tunnel halls. Just about five minutes remaining here, uh, which means we got about 12 laps left in this Formula One main event. Rinker Boat World on the side. Riverview, Florida is home, but he's trying to make his second home here in Port Neches. He found the podium last year. He's hoping to find the podium again this year, but he really wants to change positions on the podium. He took second last year, as uh, Tracy Hawkins was our champion for the opening round in 2018. He sits in second again. He doesn't want to go second two years in a row, but he does also understand that second place here allowed him to gain the points necessary to be the eventual champion in 2019. There's a, a rough Sunday for the man out of Willis, Texas, running for Tuttle Enterprises. He's running number 70 here in the final because his number two in primary boat was destroyed. Teammate Jude Gaspard said, Tracy, you know, it's better for you to be able to hop into the boat. You have the ability to garner the points throughout the season to be the 2019 champion. I want to give you that ability. So he graciously stepped aside, allowed Tracy to jump into a Seabold Design Formula One haul. And Tracy's out there trying to get the best he can out of a boat that was not set up for him. But a boat that is set up for him is the 20 of Ashton Rinker as he now is looking to eye up teammate and rookie Chris Rinker, put him a lap down, and hopefully uh, before he does that, the 52 of Rinker can do some jockeying for position to hold that Bayard leader. He came off like a rocket. As we started lap one, he already went from 
third to first off the start pontoon, and he has been out front ever since, trying to go wire to wire here on the shores of the Neches River. The opening round of the 2019 NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships. The 62 of Chris Fairchild. And don't forget, race fans, here in just about a month's time, check it out at NGKF1.com, we are going to have the inaugural Toledo Grand Prix right in downtown Toledo, Ohio. And the 62 of Chris Fairchild is a big reason why that race is coming to Toledo. Super excited for uh, Chris and everybody in Toledo to make the opening Grand Prix there. But it looks like we got to slow down both there. Boy, the number 40 of Austin Cheatham really slowing down in that Nashville Marine-sponsored entry. I don't know what's going on, but he is a rookie here in 2019, and he recognizes he needs to finish the race, so he's got to back off a little bit. That's might what he need to do to get her done. But the 20 at Rinkage, you see him set that thing on a dime. These Formula One boats are the only boats in the world. 90 degree, left-hand turns, 5Gs in the corner. You're talking an airplane on top of the water that has G-forces and turning capabilities of a Formula One car. It's the best of all worlds. We call it Formula One Tunnel Boat Racing. And the man who's mastering it all right now is your leader, the 62 Lottery.com of Chris Fairchild. Fairchild putting the number 70 of Tracy Hawkins down another lap. Looks like the day might be done for the 40. Looks like we've got 93, RJ West in third, the 20 of Ashton Rinker. You see now, look, he just came into view that's how big the lead is for the 62 of Fairchild. We've got battles all over the place. We've had battles for second and third, battles for sixth and seventh, battles for ninth and tenth, battles for twelfth and thirteenth. But the one battle we haven't had is not a single driver has been able to contest with a 62 of Fairchild. But maybe, just maybe, if there's enough laps and there's enough back markers that get in his way, can the 20 of Ashton Rinker start 2019 just like he finished 2018? Sixty-two affair. Oh no! Looks like we might have had a boat go down on the far end of the course. Ashton Rinker, you just got your wish, my friend. We had a barrel roll down in turn number two. It looks like we've got some debris on the near end of the course, and that is the young rookie, the number eight of Jeremiah Mayo, was really pushing that boat hard, fighting with the twenty-four of Spencer Love for sixth position here in this Formula One main event, and he pushed a little too hard coming into turn one. Snap rolled it in the corner. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't care where you are across the world. What just happened can potentially drastically change the outcome of this race today. The 62 of Chris Fairchild had a 15 plus second lead. These boats are running 41 second lap times. That's half a lap lead on the second place boat, Ashton Rinker. In the middle of the course, there's the 62 of Fairchild, looks like. And there's the 90 of Jamie Duran. They got her out. She was fine. I don't know if she hit a buoy or hit somebody else, but the boat ended up sinking, and they're just kind of holding it steady there in the middle of the course. Here are your one, two. race fans welcome back here and i've got a bit of a news for you i don't know where i missed it or if it happened right as the wreck happened on the previous lap somehow some way the 20 of ashton rinker got by the leader chris fairchild the number 62 and there you have it folks just like he finished 2018 he starts off 2019 with a checkered flag in his right hand your Formula One champion here at the opening round of the 2019 NGK Formula One Powerboat Championships out of Riverview, Florida. Running for Rinker Boat World, number 20, Ashton Rinker. And there's confirmation of the result. Ashton Rinker with the full 150 points. Chris Fairchild second. RJ West, the rookie, in third. Then Rusty Wyatt and Greg Foster, fifth.